Hey guys, it's Ashley Bourne Nansen here with the Red Carpet Report. We're at Disney Studios today on the set of TNT's show Perception, catching up with the cast and getting some sneak peeks on season two. Yeah. So we found out your character is going to be around most of the season. Yes. So this is going to be stretched out. Can you give us a little like teaser of what's going to happen? Donnie's a, Donnie's a character who we mentioned very briefly and in a very disparaging way, season one. Um, and now, here he is. In, uh, <laughs> it's a plus. It's not a and hallucination. And Scott Wolf, which is so weird. Um, no, it's not. Scott's been a perfect fit like, for the show and um, for the character. Uh, it's, it's established that we are soon to be divorced. And um, we have a very tumultuous sort of breakup that uh, is still a little bit too fresh, I think, especially in my character's mind. Um, sad circumstances sort of ended our relationship, wherein he slept with my best friend, which is not too cool. But, <laughs> but you know, he's really set up to be a bad guy, right? He is, and is he, or are we going to. I, I mean, the redemption that is taking place slowly is remarkable. I would have no clue how to write someone who did that into a character that you're going to root for, but yeah. you will. That was my question, because he's yeah. really kind of seems like that pretty smiling guy who's stabbing you in the back, and I'm like, are we going to keep hating him? So he's going to grow as the season runs. We hope. We hope. <laughs> is your character, I mean, I love how you guys emphasize soon to be divorced, which is like interesting, like are those papers filed? Like, do you think your character would ever give him a second chance? You could you could write on the show because there's a whole scene where I'm like, did you sign the papers, Donnie? You know, the whole thing, and we go back and forth. Would she give him a second chance? I think the answer starts off being absolutely no, and there's a lot of very barbed comments from me coming his way for many episodes on it, um, to the point that, you know, I think there will be quite a bit of sympathy for you, and then he really proves himself to be, you know, a, a man of character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun because it's it is uh, it, I, hopefully it'll be challenging for the audience because you're you're you know you first meet this guy and you have every reason to want to slap his face and, and uh, with her and for her and um, and then little by little it's like everything in life you know you start to realize that there's more to him than just this one thing that he did there's more to um, the actual story of who they are and were to each other eventually by the, by the end of the season. So a lot of things start to kind of reveal themselves that make you, you know, that challenge your original idea of like what this guy is and whether she should ever, you know, why, why she was ever with him in the first place. You know? Yeah, you really see how they used to truly make a great team, mm -hmm. you know, both personally and professionally, mm -hmm. which is really cool. The thing I love most of that is it's been patient. You know, they, yeah. you know, a lot of times on a, on a series that was, you know, not as well done as this one is, it would just be, you know, four episodes and the whole arc would have been told. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Back. You make sweeping, sincere-ish apology and then all of a sudden... Yeah, you they open you. up and then we're back, and the audience is going, hang on, we don't, what do we do here? And we're smarter than that. Yeah, and so this really is, you know, by the time there's any kind of transitions or redemptions, so a lot of, you know, I've taken a lot of beating. Um, That's good. <laughs> and I do. It's well <laughs> so, uh, you talk about your relationships right. with the doctor. I mean, you are at a new place because you guys kind of went yeah. through the last nine months. Mm -hmm. And what got what we watched, but also, so like, where are you with the doctor? And, and he doesn't seem to be too keen on the guy when he meets him, but how will that go? Yeah, I think the whole meet my new best friend, this, this my crazy professor from back in the day, doesn't doesn't go over huge with Donnie. Um, I think the evolution of Kate's relationship with Daniel has been mostly about her understanding him better after what he goes through at the end of, of season one, when he really truly reveals um, the extent of uh, his illness. So. I think knowing that reality both makes her feel more connected to him, like she's actually been let in, and she's also, I 
think more <laughs> careful with her. She was kind of starting to have some feelings. Is that over oh, now, or is she? Did she push is this it back? Gonna, is this going to be a showdown? A dog sure. versus dog. This, this, this <laughs> crazy dog versus. Crazy dog versus cheater dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some of that. There's some of that. I mean, Animal I know. Planet. I know. For, <laughs> um, you know, for for Donnie's sake, you know, he starts in the beginning. It's just like you know, he, he enlists Daniel's help for this case, and he proves to be more of a problem <laughs> than a help. And so you see a side of Donnie that's not that not everybody's going to love, which is he's willing to do whatever he needs to do mm -hmm. to get what he needs to get done. And, mm -hmm. and that comes in a big way at Daniel's expense and becomes yet another thing that probably yeah. isn't helping uh, Donnie's relationship with Kate. But um, uh, pretty soon it becomes clear that she, whatever the shape of the feelings are, feels very strongly uh, towards Daniel. And, and so there's kind of a moment where I start to recognize that he possibly is in one of the obstacles to winding up, um, gets winning her back. And so that little thing starts to happen where I start to maybe try and uh, do what I can to keep that from continuing to be a problem. I'm beating around the bush. I like drive a giant wedge to the two of them. <laughs> Not really. But I, I, you know, you start to see that, you know, again, this is a, a guy who's kind of sees what he wants and feels like he should have. And is he a narcissist? Is that what he called it? He says, nar yeah. somebody called him a narcissist? What is a narcissist? I don't know if that's a formal diagnosis. <laughs> um, <laughs> suspects. Yeah, clinically, you know, I think but it's a step before so like, a, like a yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it actually? Are we gonna see like a vulnerable side to your character? Because he comes off as like I'm too cool for school a little bit. Like I'm a BA. How many like, episodes? <laughs> <laughs> nine. We saw the first nine, and that's how you. Come <laughs> but you know, it's I mean, they introduced you that way. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that is kind of one of the big turning points in the middle of the year is he reveals a side of himself to Daniel, um, and 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 I believe in that. The, the thing is, is what changes is up until that point, it seems like most everything he does is fairly calculated and, and not not necessarily in a in a sort of a sinister way, but. He's thinking through what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And this is, becomes one of the first moments where he just kind of sort of breaks open a little bit and reveals something behind all of that. You know, it's interesting that you said that he, he you know, has everything mapped out. Because I remember last year he was saying, this is a guy who loves puzzles. For him, it's all about solving the puzzles. That was the way he said last it. year, right? Yeah. And it's interesting because, puzzles. <laughs> but in <laughs> some ways you're saying this is a guy who likes to create, not create puzzles, but like, you know, know where things are going. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And only when he just finally stops doing that for a minute and reveals what's actually going on inside of him and Daniel sort of sees a bit of that and then it turns into him going back to her and beginning this process of maybe everything's not quite as black and white as so he might get a little help he, he gets as yeah, when he gets as close as Daniel Pierce can to helping out someone who has done what he's done which is he actually does say at one point maybe he's not as bad as you think so so, yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty. And the beauty of it is, again, it's like, what, nine, eight, seven, eight, nine episodes? It's, it's, yeah, that's it's, the way that, did they last time came about? I don't know. Did I just get fired? Are we fired? Am I still fired? Yeah. Um, well, I remember talking about the chemistry between them, and that didn't come to head until the end of the first season. And we talked about that. That's true. That's absolutely true. So what do you think is driving your case? I mean, your character's really involved in your cases. You know, she's been known to push it a little too far sometimes. What do you think is driving that? You know, like, sometimes we learn more about characters of shows, and it's some past, deep, dark, you know, daddy betrayed me, so I have to, you know, something like that. Are we going to learn? I think it's, I think that it's, 
the, it's something that I relate to a great deal is having a, a passion for justice, like what is right and what is wrong, um, and needing that to be really clear and for needing people to be punished for their terrible actions sometimes. I, I, my parents took me to see The Fugitive when I was a kid, and this is me, it's crazy. And I was so upset because he did not kill that man that I had to leave halfway through the movie and I waited in the lobby. Like, I think that Kate is a little bit similar. She just can't stand injustice. And, you know, she was slighted by this guy. So in that sense, it, it carries over into her personal life as well. And learning that people aren't all good or all bad is a lot of her personal life. Do you ever watch the episodes back? I mean, just even seeing, you know, this last episode, thought it was going to go one way, totally got surprised. And being able to see the hallucinations, do you guys get to watch? That? <clears throat> it's hard ignoring the hallucinations when you're in scenes with them. <laughs> Especially today. <laughs> yeah, ooh, we got to downgrade all the pretend it's not happening next to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're always there, which is not far back. But does yeah. that ever shock you seeing it played back? or? Sometimes I'm like, really, Rachel? Why do you think I was a good choice? Or like, do you miss that beat? Or the typical thing that actors do to themselves. Yeah. But do you mean like in the sense of, oh, story wise? Yeah. Oh, this is a way they're coming in or slanting at her. Sometimes, do you? Or what about for the scripts? Do you ever find this, like, yeah. in the script, yeah. they, they yeah. won't yeah. quite get what it was going to be like? Or, or you didn't see it coming? Because we were all day positive, and who thinks they know who killed no, it? Funny. I was the only one that's wrong. <laughs> but, I never know but, you know, I, in the pilot, the first, okay. I remember being like, that is not a real person. I just knew, you know, but that's most nice. people did not. You guys knew who killed right. the, I in, the in the first episode? Yeah. I didn't. You did? I, he, he paused it, and he said, who do you think was the killer? Is when, though? When did you pause it? Um, when he said, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, I did not think that. That's, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, I never know. <laughs> you never know who it is. No, they tell other you. shows I can kind of tell what's going on, but so in the vein of like, you know, yeah, like murder she wrote or oh, something, right. you, you really, most of us, okay, fine, I don't know in the area. I know, when I'm reading it, I don't find myself ahead of it ever. Mm -hmm. uh, feeling like I know who's going to be the killer. Yeah. You can pretty much count on like, the first person they question. Because of course, I might be Unless it's someone famous. That's true. <laughs> like, wait, that person's too recognizable. To <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Uh, so, how are you guys like your characters in real life? Totally opposite, or are you finding similar traits between them? I mean, we both look a lot like our characters. <laughs> you know, there's someone that looks just like you on TV. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> um, the tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. You always carry over elements of your own, you know, personality and weed out the yeah, exactly. don't yeah. work so for each character. Mm -hmm. Which I think, I think I've definitely done that here. What about that you? Um, it's funny because I do feel it's like, in terms of like who, how he is in a in a room talking to people, like this feels mm -hmm. similar to. Him. I move my right hand a little less, and I'm slightly taller. Um, <laughs> but in here, it's <laughs> no, but it's <laughs> no, but I, but I feel like this character, as much as any I play, feels like it has as much of my own natural energy in in him, in, which is fun because ultimately you find yourself at various points playing different characters, kind of shutting down, quieting down parts of your personality or behavior, and so it's fun to play somebody who is a little closer to you in that. I think it tends to happen yeah. on TV more where, where, where uh -huh. you're playing a person day in and day out and getting you know, down. And you don't know where they're taking you next, so you only have who you are at the core to sort of guide you and to be able to meet that. It's almost barely not a good place for normal. It's an emotional resume. Weeks and weeks. I think a lot of people fall back on that instinct. I would never. Scott is now. Never cheat on her. Cheat on my own. I wonder if he's better. Her best friend. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, the decisions that <laughs> are. Dot, dot, dot. That was a cap. With her best friend. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you before you, before you take it away, what was it like? <laughs> yeah. What was it like to come into this, this crew Wait, that kind of. <laughs> what? what was it like to come into this group that had been working together the whole season? They had their vibe down. You were yeah. kind of brought in to shake it up a little bit, but what was it like to come in to be the new kid? Yeah, it's, I mean, great is the short answer just because they're amazing people. In that <laughs> but um, but you are kind of doing, you know, coming to sit at somebody else's Christmas dinner, and, and uh, there's just kind of like an existing 
world and set of relationships that you want to have enough respect for and not kind of um, you know it's 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 kind of like a, a great song that's already been you know is, is being sung and you just want to kind of sing along and play and, and and add something to it and it felt like from the beginning like even from before we started shooting I came in and we just did kind of a session where we just read stuff and they filmed it to before they'd even figured out who was going to play the role and it just felt right it just felt easy and it felt like we had been doing it already for a while and so Good. We have to get Thanks for watching the Red Carpet Report. If you like this video, be sure to like it. And for more interviews, subscribe. And be sure to watch the season premiere of Perception on June 25th.